Okay, we're back for another video update of my project with my little tiny house on wheels. I just thought I would start here in front of this beautiful miniature sunflower that came up along with the rest of these sunflowers at the base of a bird feeder that we had here all through the winter. We actually stopped putting food in there because the squirrels kind of figured out how to how to get into it and um, however some of the sunflower seeds fell on the ground and I sure didn't expect them to grow but when I saw them coming up I watered them and allowed them to be there and so now they're blooming finally okay we're gonna go out here now to my little building this morning we had the guy come back to do a little more trimming of the trees that hang over the building. I just felt like it would be easier for me to keep the roof in good shape if those cedar trees were trimmed back a little bit. So we had them come back and do that trimming. It was too high for me to reach, even on a ladder. And then also today, Adam came back or came and um, started to work on putting in the the paneling on the ceiling and the wall part of the wall so in a previous video i showed how on the lower section of the wall and like underneath the loft and kind of um, down about four feet down around that's all done in plywood which i then painted but i wanted the ceiling and the area of the walls that surround the loft, which is going to be my bed and lounge area, I wanted that to be in wood. And I'm just amazed, you can't smell it, but the smell of the cedar is really incredible. And that's part of what I wanted. I left it untreated. We just used rough, um, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's, it's what people usually use for fencing. And I decided that up high there, I'm not going to be really touching it or using the, the ceiling. So it's okay with me if it's rough. And then by not treating it with anything, at least at this point, I get to have that fantastic cedar smell. I love that warm color of cedar. And I forgot what wood we chose for this, but it's um, different. It's smooth. So, you know... Since this is going to be the area where my bed will be and I'll be leaning up against the wall and yeah, I wanted it to be a little bit nicer, smoother. And so obviously he hasn't finished. He came and worked for several hours this morning and I'll come back and finish. And um, then right here you see this nice window, it's south facing. And that section up above we're going to put in a small round window. I just really like the idea of having a window up there. Um, and so Adam said that he could do that. So he's going to put that in. And um, I said I'm going to turn around here. We still have to frame out the section up there. That's the air conditioner and there's no insulation yet on that part of the wall. <clears throat> but that's another step that needs to be done over the next week or so. Now Adam's coming back tomorrow and he's going to do most of the rest of the ceiling and the walls up high. And then I will have Miles, my electrician, come back and finish the, in the electrical and get that hooked up. And I'm going to have another person come back and work on putting trim around the windows and the door and around the baseboard or the, you know, the place where the wall meets the floor. So, wow, things are really coming along. Um, I'm a little bit stumped right now about how to do the, um, what, the, what do you call it, the backsplash. You can't really see it here but because I have it covered to protect it. That's my little kitchen counter, and the wall right up from the counter is just my painted wall, and so I want to have a, a backsplash there. So, um, 
do more research and figure out what to do with that. And then I'll just swing down here under the loft. I'm really proud of myself. I was able to put in by myself. I was able to put in the brackets and that's going to be where I hang clothing. So this under the loft area is going to be storage for clothing and all whatever else I want to just have tucked out of the way. Um, and then I'm a step back here now and what I'll do is have hanging a curtain in front of the loft hanging down. So it'll be like basically like a big closet. And then you can't see it now, but under this window facing the west, I'm going to have um, a little window, I'm um, sorry, a little table put in. So those are the plans. Um, I had been planning on putting in a mini wood stove and um, it was going to go over here in this corner. And I did a lot of research and I even bought the wood stove, but I probably should have waited and did more research because I realized after um, purchasing it, when I started thinking about installation, I'm back coming back outside because I'm going to just show pan up here and show you. I've got a very tall peak of the roof, and what I've learned is that my stovepipe has to go all the way up inside, of course, cut through the roof, and then it has to go up a foot above the peak. So that's going to be approximately 14 and a half feet. Now, all that is, seems doable, you know, if I hire somebody to put it in, but what I didn't realize is that I need to periodically uh, clean out the stovepipe, which means I have to be able to get up high and put a little broom thing down the stovepipe. And I don't really see any way around that. And you know what? I am not going to do that. I'm just not going to get up that high. I even had a hard time getting to be, to be able to paint. I had to have somebody else come and paint that very um, highest, um, the apex there of the peak, because I just couldn't reach it even with a ladder. So having to be realistic about what I'm capable of doing and what I'm willing to spend money on. You know, if I hire somebody to come and do that every two or three months or whatever it takes, it just all sounds a little bit out of my range. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do at this point. My leaning is to sell my beautiful little mini wood stove and resort to propane or electric heat. And I was going to have electric as a as my probably my half time heat and the wood stove is the other part of the time. Anyway, there's a lot to learn as I go and sometimes mistakes and then have to regroup and make new decisions and adapt and I'm actually really enjoying all of that, even the mistakes. And, um, yeah, so, so many more things to do. So that's it. I'm lucky that I've had such fantastic weather. It looks like we'll have another week or so at least of good weather so that the guys who are doing the carpentry work where they have things set up out here and all the wood and things are stored. Fortunately, we don't have any rain. I'm, I'm still covering it just in case. But fortunately, we'll get done with, um, you know, most of this outside work before the rain starts coming, which will be probably later this month. All right, so that's it for my little update. See you next time.